Hello everybody. So today we're going to be talking about the Rankin cycle. And you might say, hey, why do I have Britain written up here? It's because I'm really not going to have to change too, too much to explain the Rankin cycle to you. So the Rankin cycle is basically just the Brayton cycle but with water, okay? Um, Rankin is spelled like this. R-A-N-K-I-N-E. So that's Rankin, right? And we first start off with an isentropic compression. I'm gonna go ahead and erase these because these are different, okay? The graphs, because since we were dealing with an ideal gas before, right? Since the Brayton cycle uses air or an ideal gas, that those those diagrams are gonna be different, right? But um, we have the same processes that are going on here. However, this compressor becomes a pump, right? Since we're dealing with water. When, we, when a compressor deals with water, we just call it a pump, right? But it's still a compressor, so that's pump. Right? So this becomes isentropic pumping, right? Cool. And I'm pretty sure if you wrote isentropic compression, the teachers probably wouldn't have any problem with it. So, um, what do we have with the, with the um, Rankin cycle? So, these same processes we have here. Um, we also have, let me see. We also have um, a PV, or TS diagram, rather. So let me show you how to draw the TS diagram. So since we're dealing with um, a phase-changing substance, water, right, we have to draw our dome. So we're going to go ahead and draw our dome. And um, what you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to have two different pressures that we're dealing with, right? Since we go to from P1 to P2 to P3 to P4, but P1 and P2 are the same, P3 and, I'm sorry, P1 and P4 are the same, P2 and P3 are the same, right? So we're gonna have something that ends up looking like this, okay? Oops. Cool. Now, what we're gonna end up having is, um, let's say we started off as a compressed liquid, right? From one to two, we're gonna have something that goes straight up, right? Because it's an isentropic process, so this would be our point two, right? From two to three, let's say point three, we ended up superheated, okay? Um, we can end up somewhere maybe here, and this is sort of tough to explain because we're not doing an example right now, but you just adjust this with your example, but this is the basic concept, okay? And let's say th uh, phase four, we also were still um, superheated, right? So we end up, wow. Well, that's supposed to be a straight line down. So we end up from three to four. So point four is like that, right? Then you're just gonna draw your arrows, fairy arrows and everything. And that's really what you have for the phase changing diagram. Um, I guess if you wanna add like, if you wanna add your work in, you would add it like here, work in. But I mean, I, don't, I mean, if you wanna really go over the top, be overkill, you can do all of this. So um, that's your Q in, work out. And you can, might, might want to do this in a different color just so that they don't get confused on what you're doing. Okay, and then Q out. So that's really what you need to know for the Rankin cycle. It's almost the exact same thing as the Brayton cycle, but just with water, okay? Um, probably what I should talk about also is, let me see. I guess there's an efficiency for the whole thing. You know what, we can just tackle that in, in an example problem because one of them will ask for the efficiency. But basically, this, they might ask you for the efficiency of everything. And it's gonna be basically the same thing that we've been dealing with, your desired output over required input. But these are the main concepts for the Rankin cycle. And um, again, please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please leave, it, leave them in the comments. I'll be sure to reply, hopefully. Um, and yeah, let's keep learning thermal. Thank you.